to discuss uh, some topics of physics uh, which include uh, lenses a complete chapter with uh, several topics will be discussed as well as uh, we will talk about uh, electricity in action that how electric charge is produced and how electron move so we will discuss all these things uh, in this complete uh, one hour video so first of all um, i am uh, going to define again uh, what is physics physics is the branch of uh, science uh, which deals with the study of relationship between matter and energy matter and energy so let's define matter and energy matter is anything which occupies space and has weight whereas uh, if we talk about energy so it's uh, the ability of a body to do work if a body is able to work so we say it has energy and the work is uh, actually the product of force and displacement coming back to the main topic uh, in the physics we will discuss about uh, lenses so lens a term uh, lens it means uh, that uh, it's a transparent uh, material uh, with uh, either it is uh, made of plastic or glass with one or both sides curved so it has curved sides either one or both or we can say it's a, a spherical sides so we can we will call it a, a lens uh, but it it should be transparent transparent means that uh, it will allow the light to pass through it and uh, if we talk about uh, the types of lenses so there are two types of lenses the main types of lenses there are two uh, that is the uh, concave lens convex lens so talking about convex lens uh, a convex lens is a lens which is a uh, spherical in such a way that it is curved outward it means that it is spherical on both sides like uh, spherical on this side as well as on this side so the two sides of a lens is spherical so we we call it a, a convex lens and uh, when our light rays pass through a convex lens so they will just uh, come at a single point we, we call it a converging converging lens and uh, whenever light rays uh, pass through a lens so it's this phenomena is called refraction what another term that is called reflection is it means that uh, when light rays uh, bounce back from a shiny surface so we we say it's a reflection but when the light rays uh, uh, pass through from one medium to another medium so we we say it's a refraction so refraction has taken place so in case of lenses when the light rays pass through the lenses actually it is uh, we, we we can say the light is uh, refracting from a lens and uh, in case of convex lens as i told that uh, the light will uh, come at a single point so we we will say it's a refracting lens and uh, it uh, converge the light at a single point and uh, concave lens is a lens whose both sides are curved inward so whose, uh, the side the both sides of concave lens are curved inward and uh, it uh, diverge the light rays it spread the light rays uh, in the different angles so we can say that it is a converging lens convex lens is a converging lens so it is a, a concave lens is a diverging lens and convex lens is a converging lens uh, diverging means that it splits it breaks and spreads the lights in all directions so uh, and uh, the lens uh, it always forms real and uh, 
though it's always found virtual image whereas in case of a convex lens it always pops on real and inverted image so this is the difference between concave and convex lens the question is where the lens come from we we consider a spherical object a sphere a glass sphere or a sphere made of plastic and uh, a portion of that sphere we consider suppose a convex lens and uh, that convex lens uh, is actually the part of the sphere so the central part of that sphere is uh, called the center of the curvature so the center of the curvature or the point uh, which we say is center of curvature of the small lens which is actually taken from the spherical uh, object like a spherical ball so it will have the same center of curvature and uh, when we talk about uh, the some other terms like uh, principal axis like principal focus so what are they principal axis is actually a line which passes through a lens and uh, from the center of the lens uh, a line passes and this is called uh, principal axis and it pass through the principal focus center of curvature and optical center o i mean to say that the center of the lens is called optical center and the principal focus is actually the point where the light rays either join together in case of convex lens when the light rays pass through a convex lens so they come at a one point and that point is called principal focus so a line which should pass through principal focus optical center mean to say the middle of a lens and center of curvature so that line is called principal axis and uh, principal axis so this is a this is a, a principal axis now what is the, the radius of curvature the center of the spherical part uh, from where we have taken the lens uh, is called radius of curvature and as well as uh, it is the center of the curvature it is also called radius of the curvature and the focal length is uh, the distance between the principal focus and the optical center optical center and principal focus so this distance is called principal uh, so this is called focal length these are some terms uh, related to lenses now i'm going to talk about uh, uh, image formation in convex lens in convex lens uh, image form in different positions if suppose we are placing the object uh, in different positions so the image will also form in different sizes suppose you have a convex lens and you are uh, just uh, placing the object uh, between uh, beyond 2f now what is the 2f and f f is the distance between o and f f is the point where the light rays actually meet so if you take the double of the distance from o to f so it is called 2f if you are placing your object beyond 2f beyond 2f mean that uh, it is away from 2f so <coughs> the image will form between f and 2f if the object is beyond 2f the image of the convex lens will form between uh, f and 2f and that image will be inverted small and real The second case is when the object is placed between uh between the uh, f and 2f if suppose the object is between f and 2f so the image will form beyond 2f 2f means the two time of focal length from the center of a lens and if the object is placed uh, at 2f so what will happen when the object is placed at 2f so the image is formed at 2f at same distance on the opposite side of a lens uh, and that way that is uh, of the same size and that image will be also uh, real and inverted 
Now, uh, if you want to know why it is the real uh, in case of convex lens, so the real image is the image uh, which is uh, obtained uh, on a screen. Any image which is obtained on a screen, any paper, you can call it a screen, so that image is called a uh, real image. And uh, the virtual image, if you say, uh, what is then virtual image? So a virtual image is the image which is uh, not obtained on a screen and that image is actually not a real image. So that's why it's called a virtual image. Uh, you, you can call it uh, in the uh, imaginary image. Another case of the convex lens is when the object is uh, placed between, uh, when the object is placed at F, F is actually a point, uh, the focal point, the principal focus. So what will happen? The image will be away so much larger in size and it will not appear on the screen. It will away from the screen somewhere else on the wall and uh, that image will be uh, very very much larger in size. So the distance that is away from the screen we call it at infinity. So that image will form at uh, infinity. In the last case in convex lens is uh, when the object is so close like uh, between F and O, the principal focus and between the optical center. So what happens? When the object is so much close, so in that case the image is virtual, magnified and uh, on the same size, uh, on the same side and uh, that image is not obtained on a screen. So that is why virtual images uh, always uh, uh, not form on a screen and the real images are always formed on a screen. Whenever uh, there is one term, uh, I want to just uh, read it out, that is very important. When the light rays uh, pass through concave lens, so uh, bend in such a way that uh, they seem to be behind the lens or uh, in other words, appear to be coming from a point as shown in the, uh, I mean to say that uh, you can see it uh, in different diagrams. Now, uh, another term that is very, very important, uh, like uh, in this uh, 21st century, the digital era, uh, most of the uh, phones, mobiles and all the accessories they use as uh, lenses, uh, like microscope, like telescope, like uh, periscope. That, that, that is periscope uses mirror as well. Uh, in case of uh, microscope, microscope contain different type of lenses and uh, these lenses are used in different things. If we talk about our human eye, so the human eye has also a uh, biconvex lens and uh, that biconvex lens actually uh, working like the same way like it is in the camera mobile camera or digital camera or DSLR or any other camera so it serves the same uh, purpose uh, now uh, let me talk about uh, human eye and camera what is a camera like I'm recording through camera so a camera is actually a box with lenses at one side, a biconvex lens, and a screen, a photographic film on the other side. And we talk about uh, the old uh, digital camera, the old model camera. So it used to have a lens uh, in a black box where like a pinhole camera, you can say. So this lens uh, so just pass refract uh, the light rays and uh, the image is formed on the screen. So th that is what uh, we say, we used to say in case of uh, camera, that uh, it, it always uh, form a small, real, and inverted image on the photographic film. Now, it is in the dark and what the photographic film contain. The photographic film contain crystals of silver bromide and uh, it is uh, 
light sensitive crystals uh, which uh, receive the light so that is why we can say that uh, a camera is uh, covered in a black box or a dark box because any light uh, when when we uh, turn the button on uh, the camera shutter opens and uh, the flashlight uh, the light enters the camera and it quickly close so the shutter open and close uh, whereas the aperture the camera hole allows the light to enter uh, the amount of light uh, the required light whether you are doing your photography in a dark place in a light bright place so it depends uh, where you are uh, making the video or photos so the camera will just capture the light and it will shut down the shutter because uh, the duration of the shutter that is if suppose it is open for longer time so it will capture more light to more light mean a, a clear image or more image uh, will be captured so that is what uh, a role of a camera and it is just uh, the photographic film is uh, treated in the are dipped in different uh, processed in different solutions uh, in a dark room and uh, after several stages uh, of development uh, it uh, just uh, we, we just get a picture now digital cameras if we talk about digital cameras so digitally the picture is taken and it is being edited and uh, everything we can do digitally uh, in case of uh, digital cameras and uh, there is no photographic film we can even edit the pictures uh, through digital cameras and they also work uh, they have also a bike of max lens uh, in digital camera and they are working on the same principle now uh, coming to the human eye it is also a tiny camera the human eye is a tiny camera and uh, it uh, has a bike and max lens that lens uh, capture light and uh, the image is formed uh, on a screen. That image is also small, real and inverted like uh, a photographic film. Uh, we, I told you right now that uh, a camera formed small, real and inverted image. So the same image is formed uh, by human eye on retina. If we talk about the structure of eye, so the eye structure has uh, some parts like uh, outer part, middle part, inner part. The outer part is uh, the outer part is called sclerotic, and uh, the next to sclerotic is the uh, choroid, and then retina. So these are the structure, the main parts. There is a lens, vitreous humor, aqueous humor, cardia and uh, that is the front uh, transparent tissues of the eye and uh, close to the cardia there is the central hole which is called pupil which allow the light to enter the eye and uh, then through lens it moves and focuses the image on the retina and uh, macula where the photoreceptor cells are present and they take the, the impulses to our brain and the iris is the color part of the eye which uh, uh, control the pupil size whereas the ciliary muscles they uh, make the lens thicker or thinner and we can say we can call it the uh, accommodation power of a lens as you know that uh, in most of the cameras the lens uh, move back and backward and forward backward and forward but in case of uh, uh, we say human eye so the eye lens uh, can't move back and forth but instead it just become thicker or thinner uh, with respect to the different objects uh, involuntary it is an involuntary action and uh, the ciliary muscles control uh, this uh, whole process uh, involuntary it means to involuntary mean that uh, it is uh, not uh, controlled by our will it is involuntary controlled 
So when we are looking go to a closer object, suppose this pen which is uh, so closer to me, so my eye lens should uh, reduce its focal length by becoming thicker. And the ciliary muscles will uh, make the lens thicker. And suppose if the object is away from my eyes, so in that case, the ciliary muscles will make the lens thinner. The thinner lens have less converging power, so it will convert the rays away from it. So the focal length will be little bit more and it will again form the image on the retina. So that is why we can say that uh, the eyes uh, have the property that is a peculiar behavior of the human eye to uh, become thicker or thinner with respect to the object, either it is closer or it is away. And there is one more thing that there are, how can we perceive different colors if we talk about the human eye, like in dark we can't see, and in the bright light we can see different colors. So this is also a another term or another main topic. Uh, we can pursue different colors in dark and in bright light. In the brighter light, uh, there is special kind of cells on our retina, which is called rod and cones. So the cone cells pursue different colors. Whereas the rod cells or the cells, they only pursue black and white color in darkness. So when there is uh, darkness, so we can only see uh, dim light uh, or in dim light we can see black and white colors after some time. But for, for a short time we can't see anything. Why? Because our eyes uh, in the bright light, uh, the cone cells were activated and the rod cells were deactivated. So they take time to activate or in deactivation. So that's why we can't see in dark too for some time. Later on, we start looking. Now there are some defects uh, in the human eye that I want to discuss here in this video. Uh, that is uh, a problem called short-sightedness uh, or scientifically we can call it uh, myopia. And the other problem is called far-sightedness or long-sightedness and that is called metropia, hypermetropia or uh, far-sightedness. We can also call it uh, long-sightedness. So some people they can't see distant objects and they can see closer objects uh, clearly. So the problem with those people are called uh, myopia. They are actually suffering from myopia and uh, their lens uh, is usually thicker or the eyeball is very bigger and uh, they can only uh, uh, see closer objects because the lens has more converging power and uh, when, they, when they see distant objects so the lens the ciliary muscles have not the ability to, to make the lens thinner and uh, this results uh, uh, in the problem that is called uh, myopia or uh, short-sightedness. On the other hand, uh, far-sightedness is another problem with some people having uh, eyeball very smaller or you say uh, the eyeball become very small and they can't see uh, properly in the closer view because the lens is thin and it the ciliary muscle can't uh, make the lens thicker when uh, they observe closer objects. So the distant objects they can see clearly but uh, closer objects uh, they cannot see. So these are the two uh, problems uh, the one is called short-sightedness and the other is called far-sightedness. So different people suffer. So for them, there should be a use of glasses like I have the glasses. And uh, uh, the first case, uh, uh, concave lens should be used to, to expand or to increase the focal length. In the second case, uh, that is uh, a person with uh, Long sightedness, uh, he should be given, uh, or he will use uh, spectacles having uh, 
convex lens. So a convex lens will actually, uh, what will the convex lens do? It will convert the light rays and uh, the far sighted patient uh, have poor converging power uh, of the lens. So it can be improved by wearing spectacles having convex lenses. If we talk about uh, the lenses uh, type, so there are two many types of lenses. Concave lens, convex lens. The one is called uh, plano concave lens. The one is called plano concave lens, plano convex lens, biconcave lens, biconvex lens, concave convex lens. Convexo concave lens. So these are the six uh, major types of uh, lenses. Now, if we uh, think about uses, so I already explained that uh, uh, concave lenses are convex lenses. They are used in the science laboratories where uh, students can do some experiments. A convex lens also serves as a magnifying glass and uh, it uh, converts all the light rays and uh, if we talk about uh, uh, cow or convex lens are their combinations like I told so they are also used in the microscope they are used in the optical projector and they are used in the telescopes they are used in different telescopes like uh, terrestrial telescope like we can say they are used in the astronomical telescope and they are used in the spectroscope so these uh, lenses are too much important uh, if suppose we, we talk about space if we want to study about uh, the heavenly objects the distant stars planets so like a Hubble telescope so it has uh, 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 lenses it has uh, mirrors and lenses like we say radio telescope so the radio telescope they also consist of uh, these things so that's very, very much uh, uh, important to know about uh, those lenses. So in this chapter, we discussed about uh, the topics like uh, lenses, its types like uh, concave lens, convex lens, the image formation by concave lens, uh, convex lens. And uh, then we discussed uh, in detail about uh, the camera and uh, human eye that how they are similar and how they are different. And later on we discussed uh, about uh, the other features of the human eye like uh, accommodation power of the lens, how can a uh, human eye uh, can see distant objects uh, and how uh, can a human eye see uh, closer objects. So these all things uh, have been uh, checked through in this uh, video, uh, we also discussed uh, some uses uh, of uh, lenses and some types of lenses. So if I briefly define a lens, so a lens is actually a transparent material which is made of plastic or glass and it's one or both sides should be spherical that is curved either inside or outside. And uh, a convex lens is also called a converging lens, it has a converging power and a concave lens is called diverging lens because it has a diverging power. So this was about uh, lenses and another topic in this video I want to discuss is about uh, electricity in action. Electricity, what is electricity or what is electric current? So you may have hear these terms and we are dealing with electricity every day in our rooms like uh, we are switching on turning on the lights excuse me we switch on we turn on the light in our room so that is uh, the point that we are actually using uh, electricity so electric current, where this electric current comes from? It is the portion of the video we will discuss uh, electricity, electric current, electric charges, how they are addressed when they are in motion and uh, 
what is a generator and how the electric current can be generated by a generator what is meant by a simple generator like a bicycle dynamo so all these things uh, will be discussed uh, in this uh, portion of the video first of all i would like to say talk about uh, electric current uh, that electric current is actually the flow of charge flow of electrons we know that uh, atoms the conductor is actually metals they are good conductor like iron like aluminum like gold like silver like platinum so these are conductors and these conductors have atoms atoms have electrons protons and neutrons so the electrons revolve around the nucleus protons and neutrons are inside the nucleus so a conductor uh, have uh, a conductor has uh, free electrons because it has atoms, the valence electrons of an atom, they are sometimes free to move from one atom to another. So there are some spaces between the atoms in which uh, electrons can be freely present. But uh, at true temperature, the electrons can be available as free. But at zero degree Kelvin measure, where we can say electrostatic the term, which means that the uh, electron at rest. So at zero degree Kelvin, which is equal to minus twenty uh, two seventy three degree uh, C, uh, if we lower the temperature to that level, so what will happen? The electron will uh, stop their movement, and uh, at that point, uh, electron free electron will not be available. Or in room temperature, we can say that uh, the electrons uh, are available and they are free. To move and uh, free electrons help uh, in the flow of current. When the electrons, uh, when we attach uh, the wire to a battery, so the electron potential at one side is much more, so the electrons start flowing in the wire. And uh, this is what we say uh, you know, flow of electron, and this is current. Current is due to proton and neutrons flow in uh, a car battery. We say we dip electrodes and the H2SO4, which ionizes in water, as we discussed in our previous videos. So, that ions flow and the movement of that ions is also producing current. And uh, in case of uh, a semiconductor, uh, the holes uh, which is produced uh, when the uh, valence electron just uh, uh, come out of the valence shell so there is deficiency of electron which is called hole so these holes are also responsible for the flow of electron in semiconductor there are two types of semiconductor the one is called extrinsic semiconductor and the other is called intrinsic semiconductor Extrinsic semiconductor is actually impure form and uh, it has p-type and n-type semiconductors. The p-type semiconductor example is silicon where is arsenic and antimony is the example of n-type semiconductor. Like we talk about a solar panel, a solar panel with uh, photovoltaic cells. So they have also p and n-type semiconductors and uh, when they are heated by sunlight so these photons actually produce electric current uh, or something like that we can say now another term that I want to talk about in this video uh, is about uh, uh, we say generator is uh, we know that uh, we have electricity in our houses so it is either by solar power or wind power or even hydroelectric power, thermal power, or nuclear power. So these uh, are the different uh, sources of energy. So a generator is actually a mechanical device which uh, converts the mechanical energy, the rotational energy into electrical energy. A generator has a magnet coil and when the magnet move around the coil, so electric current produced 
in 18th century hence christian or state stated that when there is flow of electrons current in a wire so it will produce a magnetic field on the other hand his experiment was reversed by michael faraday in 1831 and he stated that it is not necessary that uh, electric current can only produce magnetic field but magnetic field can also produce electric current and he just took uh, a bar magnet and a wire loop and he just move it back and forth the magnet like this one is a magnet and this is a coil so the magnet was moved back and forth back and forth and it was connected uh, with the galvanometer and later on he noticed that when there is relative motion of this magnet and this coil so electric current start production which shows that magnetic field can also produce electric current like electric current produce magnetic field so these are the these were the experiments of uh, hens and michael faraday we can make a, a generator by the help of uh, we can we can make an ac generator uh, with the help of uh, faraday law of uh, electromagnetic induction we can say what is a ac generator ac generator is actually alternating current generator and the opposite of ac generator is a dc generator so what is a dc generator DC generator is a generator which uh, uh, which produces the uh, electric current uh, in one direction. So we can say it's a unidirectional uh, generator. If the DC generator is direct current, it means that uh, the current uh, it is in unidirectional, whereas alternating current generator it changes in direction. And how will a generator produce electric current? Uh, suppose in ac generator uh, there is a coil which is uh, actually armature part which will rotate the magnets that are present uh, on the two sides the north and the south pole there is armature in between there is one handle when you start rotating the handle so the coil will move in the magnet and it will produce electric current so by this way an ac generator works or we can simply say that an alternating current generator works on the principles of electromagnetic induction ac generator works on the principle of electromagnetic induction and uh, there is another example of uh, ac generator that is a bicycle dynamo when a bicycle dynamo is attached to a wheel of a bicycle so when we when we ride on a cycle so the wheel rotates and it rotates the magnet uh, the dynamo contain magnet and coil and the coil it is uh, it is covered with the uh, copper wire and that copper wire uh, when the magnetic uh, when the magnets rotate so they are actually magnetic lines change and the change in magnetic lines produces uh, electric current because the change in magnetic lines we can say change in flux the change in flux uh, produces the uh, uh, electric current and that electric current uh, is uh, used uh, by by the cycle light and uh, we can see the light uh, we can see the road or the path in the dark so this is little bit about uh, uh, ac generator now i'm going to talk about uh, another source of electricity that is the electric current source is uh, a dry cell we can call it a battery a dry cell uh, the parts of a dry cell it has uh, the outer casing metallic jacket or metallic uh, casing and the inside it is covered with zinc plate which serves as a negative electrode and then it is a there is a paste there is a carbon rod and these all things are present in a dry cell and uh, when uh, there is a reaction there are two types of reaction actually uh, that take place uh, in a dry cell the one is a zinc electrode Uh, zinc uh, reaction at zinc it is uh, 
uh, loss of electrons so we can say it's a uh, uh, oxidation and on the other hand uh, there is another reaction that is a reduction gain of electron so these two reactions take place side by side and the electric current produced in a dry cell and uh, a scientist named Leclanchi uh, he just uh, in the 18th century I think uh, he uh, invented a dry cell and uh, that is why we can say a dry cell uh, like we were discussing about uh, physics and uh, the electricity generation by generator in uh, that uh, topic so I think that uh, it is now clear uh, we have different uh, energy sources and uh, we can generate electricity by either uh, wind power, by hydroelectric power, by geothermal, by tidal energy and uh, these are different sources of uh, energy. Michael Faraday stated that when there is the relative motion between magnet and coil so current will be produced and the direction of the current depend uh, on the direction of the coil. So this was the statement of uh, Michael Perare and uh, uh, if we talk about uh, something more uh, why which source of uh, electricity or simply say energy is uh, better or uh, which one is better or which one is not better so simply we will say uh, there are merits and demerits of uh, every source of electricity or energy suppose uh, you are talking about uh, solar power where you are using solar panels and uh, the solar panels uh, which uh, are a green energy and right now the world is facing global warming it is facing the greenhouse effect and the industrialization and so much more things. So right now it is so important to uh, turn uh, the country to the solar system, solar panels or solar power. But the problem is it is so expansive that the world countries may have uh, chances to just avail that opportunity but uh, a country like uh, poor country like uh, Pakistan or any other like that so they rely on other people countries for loan and they can't uh, afford such a uh, expensive project so like Indonesia like Africa there are so many countries around the world which can't uh, afford this technology whereas if we talk about uh, hydropower so one can think that it is the cheaper way of uh, generating electricity yeah it is and uh, this is the cheapest uh, source of electricity but the problem is that uh, one uh, ought to have uh, a much piece of land there will be a disturbance in the ecosystem, the migration of the birds and so many, many problems uh, they may come up with this uh, way. So that's why I think that the uh, hydropower plant is the cheapest way but there are some merits and demerits like you know about the gorgeous things in the China they stopped or reduced the rotation of the earth to some point zero zero second like that you can just check it out by yourself so that is the problem that uh, uh, water water is also uh, sometimes scarce in area where there is no rainfall so you can't uh, build dams in such area where there is no rainfall so where the water will come to the dams suppose if I talk about uh, India or Pakistan or China or these countries where there is somehow water in and dams, rivers, but uh, like deserts, uh, Africa or something like that, or Egypt, where there is only Nile River. So that's a problem for those countries. Uh, it, it is so much uh, uh, 
weak parts you can say that uh, the area uh, where you are constructing them there will be people and they have to migrate to other place you have to change the natural flow of water so these problems exist in hydropower if we talk about uh, thermal power plants so you are producing uh, heat energy from electrical energy from coal or anything like that so this is another problem you are producing a lot of co2 you are producing a lot of uh, uh, air pollution that will affect uh, the people health so that's why i think that uh, thermal power plants should be invited as well as if we talk about uh, uh, wind power so the windmills they are just producing a lot of noise so another uh, problem of uh, wind power plant is that they are producing uh, noise and you can't run, operate uh, the windmill in every place because there is need of a lot of uh, uh, what do you say wind and that is 15 to 20 kilometer per hour which is not possible in every area so you have to move to the local uh, coastal areas in that case next topic that i want to talk about some problems with nuclear power plant Nu nuclear power plant has also much more uh, weak points or say problems uh, in the sense that uh, uh, the nuclear power plant you have to uh, deal with the gamma rays which is so dangerous and they are carcinogenic they are cancer causing so that's why you have to yeah one kg of uranium is producing uh, 30 3 million kg coal uh, heat or the heat energy that is produced by that amount can be produced by this but it is again another problem uh, these are the topics but one has to check out uh, the priorities uh, on their own that whether it is good or bad which energy source is better for which country so it would be considered or it will be uh, taken in consideration like China dames, Pakistan dames, or USA, there are so many dames. So they are, uh, the drawbacks or the weak points are much lesser than the benefits of these dames. So that's another uh, point uh, to discuss. So in this uh, long uh, one hour video, we discussed uh, different uh, type of uh, energy sources uh, the first part of the video covered lenses and the second part covered uh, what do you say uh, these projects uh, like lenses and then electricity in action the ac generator the dc generator and blah 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 so all these things are discussed if you are interested subscribe this youtube channel and uh, you will get a lot of good informative videos and uh, that may be uh, related to some other topics, but uh, stay tuned and focus. Uh, yes, you subscribe, like and share. So you are watching our YouTube channel. Thumbs up, subscribe our channel. Matter, structure, chemical composition and its properties. In the previous videos, we discussed about certain topic. In this video, we will summarize the whole story we discussed uh, in the previous lectures and previous videos. So the first thing we defined assets, that assets are the substances that uh, uh, provide hydrogen ions in equal solution. And then we talk about solution, the solution types and uh, how can we prepare equal solution so we, we discuss those things and uh, then we talk about uh, so some properties of assets that assets are sour in test they are good conductor of electricity in equal solution and their pH is uh, from 1 to 6 uh, 7 uh, so in between these ranges and uh, we we discussed about uh, the litmus test of the assets in the previous videos and then we turn to alkali and alkali which is a uh, 
um, uh, actually from Al-Kali, that's an Arabic word, and uh, some ashes when they are put in water, and they have uh, nature of alkaline or basic solution. So, so we discussed these things in our previous lectures and videos. And now we are on about to talk about uh, a, some properties of alkali, so they are better in test. Suppose someone asks about uh, the differences between acid and alkalis, and you are there to check it out. So this is quite easier. So from the physical properties, one can find out whether the solution is acidic or alkaline. We also discussed about uh, some organic acids, some mineral acids. Even in our kitchen, there are so many items that contain, uh, they are just acids and they are organic, like we can say apples, so they, they, they contain oxalic acid, like uh, we say uh, oranges, lemons, though they contain uh, citric acid, we say vinegar. Uh, even it's apple vinegar or any vinegar, so organic vinegar, so it will contain malic acid, will contain the curd. Mostly we talk about curd, so it contain lactic acid. So these are the things we previously discussed. Uh, we, we also talk about some chemical properties of um, acids. Uh, they are, they, they are nice in water and uh, they have some property like uh, we say when the acids uh, we treat with the alkali so they form salt in water and uh, uh, in case uh, we, we react uh, acids with metal suppose you have a piece of metal iron and you are just uh, dipping it down in HCl or H2SO4 or any acid so it will release hydrogen gas and uh, a salt will form, so mostly the salts are soluble in water, so you will not see the, uh, the salt in the water, it will be in dissolved form. So that's why we say equal solution, something that uh, oh, when we dissolve it uh, in water. And then we talk about uh, some uses of uh, acids, so acids have different uses like uh, the lemons, uh, they, they are just used as a preservative whenever you are making pickles. So you can use uh, lemons as a preservative. And uh, on the other hand, uh, you are also using uh, lemons or citrus fruits. So, so the fruit salt is made from these uh, citrus fruits and the fruit salt uh, is very good for stomach. And uh, if we talk about uh, some other uses of acids, as we previously discussed in our videos, uh, we have some mineral acids and uh, in a detail I told uh, about uh, H2SO4 that is a king of metals uh, or even elements. So we can say it's a compound, so it's a king of uh, all chemicals. That's the right thing uh, because um, it is concerned with fertilizer, with drugs, with explosives, with uh, even paper, glass, and everything. Uh, H2SO4, that's a sulfuric acid, it is used, and uh, uh, the sulfuric acid is directly related to the prosperity of a country. So, so that's why the country which uh, produced more H2SO4, so they will be more prosperous and the country which uh, produce less, so they will be less prosperous. We discussed about uh, the uses of alkalis like soap. So it contains NaOH sodium hydroxide. It is in the soap, ammonia, which is used in the preparation of uh, uh, nitric acid and the nitric acid further uh, used in different uh, processes. In the same way, we discussed about uh, aluminum hydroxide, which is uh, actually uh, antacid, and uh, calcium hydroxide, uh, which uh, uh, is actually slake lime or lime water. So, when there is acidity in the soil, so we use calcium hydroxide. It is also using, uh, used as a whitewash and the sodium hydroxide uh, which is known as caustic soda. So where the word caustic, this is a new word for you, so caustic means burning. 
So the sodium hydroxide solution that can have a burning effect, uh, so burning sensation. So when they are just uh, on your skin, and we discuss. Yeah. So welcome to our YouTube channel. Continuing the previous topic, we were just talking about uh, acid, alkalis, and salt, and uh, we just defined acids that uh, acids are the substances which provides hydrogen ions in aqueous solution, whereas alkalis are the substances which provides OH ions in aqueous solution. And when we talk about uh, salt, so a salt is uh, a chemical compound that is formed uh, when acid and alkalis react together. Now, a term compound, what does this mean? A compound is uh, uh, made from elements and uh, when the elements combine, so they form compound. Elements are pure substances that is made of same type of atoms whereas uh, when we talk about atoms so they are the smallest particle of matter uh, they take part in chemical reaction and what is a chemical reaction so a chemical reaction is actually uh, when two or more than two substances react together so they form a new substance or we can say uh, any chemical compound uh, when it uh, form or break so that process is actually called uh, chemical reaction. So in chemical reaction, chemical compound either form or break. So in the previous videos, uh, we discussed about uh, all those things uh, in which uh, physical and chemical properties of acids, alkalis, and uh, uh, we, we talk about salt. So what are the uses of salt? Uh, we can also talk about these. Uh, sodium chloride, for example, this uh, let's uh, take a uh, sodium chloride uh, in a seal, which uh, which is a uh, salt. So, uh, sodium chloride it is uh, used as a table salt. So, uh, it is used uh, uh, in flavoring uh, the food items as well as uh, it's a good uh, preservative. Salt is used uh, in uh, preservating uh, different items even the uh, food we can preserve it by salt uh, if we talk about uh, sodium bicarbonate so it is uh, a salt which is a basic salt and it's used uh, as uh, antacid and uh, potash alum is another example of a salt which is used uh, as uh, antiseptic in the minor bleedings so different salts uh, have different uh, uses as well as uh, if we talk about uh, uh, the uh, what do you say uh, the type of salt so it will be either acidic or basic or alkaline salt or basic salt or neutral salt so this depends uh, upon the formation the chemical uh, the chemical reaction uh, which uh, results in the formation of a salt uh, it depends on these uh, factors whether you are acid and alkali that, uh, that you are combining to form a salt in a neutralization reaction uh, is it uh, strong acid and strong alkali weak acid and weak alkali or strong acid and weak alkali so it depends on that a neutral salt will only form when there will be a strong acid and strong base on the other hand if uh, they are not strong enough so any one of them, if it is weaker, so the opposite side will be expressed uh, in the product like uh, basic salt with base properties, acidic salt with acidic. Continuing the previous topic, we were just talking about uh, acid, alkalis and salt and uh, we just defined acids that uh, acids 